Boundaries keep you safe. Safe. You don't have to compromise on these very integral things in order to, you know, meet somebody else's deadline for your life. The difficulty of implementing boundaries. It's a woman who is confident in her own voice, yeah, confident in true. her own choices, who can even have that conversation that yeah. says, you know, one, two, three strikes, sir. You're out of here. Thank you. Hello. You give the devil an inch, he gonna take a mile and keep Push. Hello and welcome to the Two My Sisters podcast. I'm Courtney. And I'm Renee and we are your online sisters and hosts of the Two My Sisters podcast. We are all about promoting the wellness, growth and development of a community of sisters around the world. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about boundaries, establishing and maintaining boundaries in the dating space, Necessary. romantic relationships, just, 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 we're back at it, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, mm. the girls are still dating. Mm. They're still outside. They are. I know that there are some sisters that are happy in yeah. their long-term healthy relationships, relationships. whatnot. But for every one sister that is happy, healthy, and dating, there are at least another five, six, seven girlies who are just going finding it. finding it difficult yeah. to navigate the space. So I yeah. thought this could be the greatest opportunity for us to discuss it in this episode. I love it. I love it a lot. Excitement, excitement. You know, the girls always love the romantic stuff. Oh, you guys love you a know. good dating episode. To be very honest with you, so do I. I do. Who doesn't love gist? about romance just a small, small you know just a little little an idol of our time a love. little little but before we get into all of that exciting stuff about yes. love do we have any housekeeping announcements uh, as some of you may have been notified yesterday was actually the ushering of my 27th 27. year um, we thank god i am officially 27 years old oh, now as we film baby. this i'm 26 <laughs> but as you hear this i would have matured as some would have said, actually, I would have transcended you st- oh, into, t- whoa. <laughs> oh. into 27. And Purr. I'd like to announce to the nations that now. as I have entered my grown woman let's era, go, let's go. the Lord will be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Selah. <laughs> Selah. <laughs> now, honestly, I had my birthday yesterday as of when you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's great to celebrate another year of Happy life birthday friend God, thank you you know it's me i am a firm believer of birthday months yes. so don't think that uh if you whenever you're listening to this don't think that you've missed out on the opportunity to wish our good sis happy birthday she will be accepting birthday wishes yeah. birthday prayers yeah. and birthday pounds yeah. gbp throughout the whole of this yeah, month yeah yeah you guys already know what i'm on 27 for 27 if you want to give your girl 27 pounds you can donate it straight to the bright future academy we are currently building a school in ghana as we tell you guys we never fail to let you know um but yeah that project is nearly done but you know we live we need funds the children need funds to go to school and so if you would love to gift me with anything please donate 27 pounds to the bright future academy on on my behalf i would be forever indebted absolutely and you know what is another thing that you can do if you like me have been encouraged by Courtney as a human being, as a wonderful sister, as just a woman of glory, a woman of anointing, then you should head on over to her channel where she has a brand spanking new podcast called Be Encouraged. Now, I don't know about you. I am Courtney's biggest fan. (laughs) And I even need to go and comment on episode two. I'm like halfway through it. I need to go and comment. This is because the girl is fantastic. You You know, it's one of those ones where, you know what? It's one of those ones where it's very easy to become familiar with your friend's gifting, but you have a talent for speaking. You really do. And I am so glad that you have the space and the environment to share that with the world, especially around faith, because the girls need to hear the gospel, but they also need to be encouraged. It's not enough to just hear it, but we also need to be encouraged to follow it. So... I've been I've been encouraged. I ain't gonna lie to you. I get Courtney in person and I get her in my earways. So you know it's giving 360. <laughs> if you also want to be part of the 360 fan club, be encouraged. Join it, Thank watch it, friend. stream it, support it, share with a friend that needs to be encouraged. Let's get that encouragement going, especially as it is May. We are fast approaching halfway through the year, and I know some people have lost steam. So yeah, <laughs> if you're trying to true. pick up that train. I would encourage you to check out Be Encouraged. Thank you. I see what you did there. You did. Uh, I love it. <laughs> I'm in my 
grown woman mm-hmm. but still funny back. back oh 100 percent. grown women are hilarious they really are you yeah. know and i hope that we continue to just become funny and Amen. funny alongside our wisdom because people mm. are always like oh you know i want to grow in wisdom and maturity i also want to grow in humor 100 percent. hallelujah is that it for our housekeeping announcements yeah I think so. Oh, actually, keep your eyes peeled. I have been in conversations with Abin Bola from Four. Whoa. Are putting together this plus size class. So if that is something you'd be interested interested in, let the English come today. It is, ah, hallelujah. Um, if that is something you would be interested in, comment down below. Let me know. Come let on us now. know. Come and on. we'll put on another class. Come on now. Yeah. I can be the DJ for this one. Now. 100%. Yeah, I'm going to sit down. I'm not, I have no, <laughs> no interest whatsoever. We're what looking at a different with. thing, actually. Wouldn't it be step aerobics? Okay. Yeah, it would be a different activity. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Purr, okay. <laughs> Might just join in then somewhere at the back. I okay. think you'd love it, actually. You know? Oh, I'm joining it now. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Folded <laughs> like a deck chair. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I keep your eyes it. peeled. That's yeah. it. That's it. Keep your eyes peeled. Join the mailing list. Like, yeah, you know. for real, because that's actually where first we often, to tell you. This is the thing, and we often leave it till the end because we assume that people around these sides know what to do. Oh Clearly. Gosh, you should do a running one. Yeah. You should do a running one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm actually that would up be for that. really cool. I'm up for that. Funnily enough, oh, guys, yeah, my Hackney 5K is coming up in like two weeks. So, like, please send me lots of love. I've been running and stuff, and it's been a journey. Um, <laughs> So you say it like you were forced. Nah, it was your own endeavor. Yeah, and this is a challenge. You know the ones where you actually got yourself into something. Mm. But it's been such a wonderful journey. I remember there was one time I went for a run. I came back. I saw Courtney. Courtney was like, girl, how you doing? How you been? I was like, girl, my foot bleeding. Yeah. It was my entire fault because I was doing entirely too much and I wasn't wearing the right socks for running. You weren't wearing your fourth sock. Yeah. I was not wearing my fourth socks. So the back of my shoe was really the friction between that and my ankle. And I didn't realize until the end. So I had Mm. to limp my way to the end of that finish line. But I got there and that's the Mm. most important thing. Exactly. So sisters that are into like running and all that kind of jazz, just the sporty babes, just pop a comment down below if you'd be interested in that. It's giving the TMS sports community. I like it. TMS fit, I think they call it. Oh, oh. Keep your eyes very peeled. <laughs> <laughs> Single eye emoji, double Single. eye emoji. <laughs> you know when we texted each other that I wanted to screenshot and put no context to this week's episode. <laughs> Just single double. <laughs> hilarious. Actually hilarious. Yeah. Well, the house has been swept. Alas, we must take our activities and our sweeping to another home mm. that also needs to be cleaned. Mm. Thus, we dive into a ding, ding, ding dilemma. Hi, sisters. Hey, sweetheart. As a new listener, I'm deeply appreciative of the wisdom and guidance shared by such beautiful women of faith. Well, welcome to the sisterhood. Welcome, welcome. That's so sweet. She said beautiful and we're women of faith. Oh, my God. Wogs. Uh, Wogs. (laughs) (laughs) Reclaiming the wag culture. (laughs) My dilemma revolves around a longtime friend from college. Mm. While he hinted at romantic feelings early on, I prioritized studies and we were able to maintain a genuine friendship over the past six years. Mm. Despite occasional distance due to other commitments, our bond remained strong. Towards the end of last year, our communication dwindled. I assumed it was because he was balancing a demanding schedule, including pursuing a master's degree, working full time, and nurturing his non-profit and photography ventures. Recently, we reconnected over the holidays where I unexpectedly found myself drawn to kiss him. Later on in that day, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it was really relevant to today's episode. Later on in that day, he asked to kiss me. This came as a surprise as this was the first time in months we hung out and had the chance to catch up. Overwhelmed by emotions and recent experiences, I laughed it off, unsure of how to proceed. Having recently navigated complicated feelings with another friend, I've been cautious about entering into another situationship or undefined relationship. Understandable. I believe God has a partner for me, but I currently feel like I'm in a season of self-discovery and focusing on the purpose God has given me. Over the past five months, I've been torn between reaching out to my friend and apologizing for laughing off his feelings or maintaining distance to avoid complicating our relationship further. While I miss our friendship dearly, I want to respect his feelings and maintain honesty. 
Despite prayers for clarity, I remain uncertain about the right course of action. Any advice on navigating this dilemma would be great, greatly appreciated. Love from a new sister in New Jersey. Oh, hey. P.S. Happy early, well, obviously, yeah. Happy early birthday, Courtney, from one May baby, May 1st to another. Oh, thank you, sister. I, I hope you also had a happy birthday, May 1st. Happy birthday, pew, 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 fireworks. Oh, this is an interesting dilemma. Well, firstly, I think it's very honorable for you to want to be respectful of his feelings. Um, and, you know, it seems like there's a mutual affection. Yeah. But if you feel as though this might not be the right time um, to, you know, pursue a relationship, I think it's down for you, or if that's what you're questioning, I think it's down to you taking a step back and really just assessing like, okay, this is there's this person I kind of like and it's, he seems to like me too um is a relationship something that I actually want is it mm. something that I can see myself committing to um pursuing right not even just the commitment aspects of it because you don't know where this will go mm. but is this something that I am willing to make room for in my life even off of the back of last week's episode mm. if this is something that you desire it's probably something you're going to have to make room for so the question you need to ask yourself is are you willing to make room for it if the yeah. answer is yeah then I think proceed with caution but proceed like it sounds <laughs> like it will be fun but it all comes down to you making the decision about whether this is something you're willing to put one foot into at the very least yeah. Um, I think the reason why it's important for you to go away and do that thinking is even though he likes you, if you're not ready, there's, you shouldn't pressure yourself just because somebody else seems ready. Um, and I also think you should know what you want to get out of it before getting into it. Cause things like this can easily evolve into a, oh, he likes me. I like him. We flirt and we're just Nonsense. flirting continuously till kingdom come. Can you imagine? So, um, yeah, just like go away and think, okay, I've, I have been single for a while. I've been enjoying the season of my life. Am I willing to move into something different, you know? And if you are, then let him know. I kind of felt like kissing you too. Oh, spicy. What are we, what are we gonna do about spicy. this then, are we? Now I'm not saying go and kiss him. <laughs> Keep your lips to yourself. Your little spicy mix, yeah. <laughs> All right. But let him know, the, the feeling's kind of mutual. Let's explore where this goes. Let's get to know each other a little bit. Like you said, it was your first time your first time meeting in person? Yeah, after quite a while. After a while, yeah. So just see if that feeling is sustained after meeting each other a couple more times. Like, was it maybe just the overwhelming, you know, I've missed you, oh my gosh, you've missed me too. Or like, I don't know, was mm. it just a, a result of not seeing each other for a really long time or was it a true emotion? I think you'll see that after meeting each other a couple of more times. Um, so yeah, that's what I feel. Think. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm understanding this dilemma too tough. I, potentially. I, yeah, I think it's one of those ones where sis has maybe been for a lot in her lifetime, yeah. and in terms of her romantic relationships, they haven't been positive. Yeah. So with like situationships or like kind of heartbreak, and now this person being a friend of yours for yeah. like the past six years to now dive into something can probably feel right, so scary. Right, right, right. So I definitely hear her caution and nervousness, and I think with the competing message that she feels that like she's hearing from God around, like, I want you to focus on your purpose ah. and establishing yourself. It's kind of like, ah, do I proceed? Am yeah, I going to yeah. be able to do that if this is a season that I think God has called me to yeah. focus on myself? Right. Okay. I get you. Sorry. I was adjusting the microphone. No, no. So really you're, good, you're good. You're um, good. Because I was shouting. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, I hear it. I actually hear that. I think if you are feeling like, God is telling you focus, then I would really like seek not only like confirmation, but also contentment with mm. that instruction, at least for now. And what makes it good actually is the fact that you are friends. You're not kicking this guy out of your life. You're right. not saying, you know, hey, gotta close that door. You're actually just being like, I really like you as a person. Um, but right now I just don't think I'm ready for anything like that or I can give the priority to something like that so let's just remain friends but like okay no you wanted to kiss me okay. ha, ha, ha. like kind of not laugh it off but joke about it like make it something you're both comfortable just mm. being like oh shah we'll see what the future holds but um I think there's no need to be super awkward about it mm. I think if you've gone away and you've prayed and you feel as though God is telling you this is not the time for you to do what it is that um, could happen, then it's okay. There, there may be a time where God gives you the release where he's like, yeah, go for it, yeah. you know? 
Um, I also think just make sure this isn't you overthinking it, not Mm -hmm. to sow doubt in your heart, but just make sure this isn't you, you know, running to what you think God would say, but not actually like listening to what he might be saying. Mm. So um, yeah, just continue to pray about it if there's still that uncertainty within you. But it sounds like you've gotten your instruction, but you're just struggling to feel like it's the right one. Mm. Um, But I really do think God's instruction towards you is the best one to follow, Mm. in my opinion. I just think men be around (laughs) men be around and if this guy is your friend like he'll be around too so maybe this is something but it might be in the future maybe it's just not for now there's just a lot of like maybes but i think the one thing that is certain is god has told you something just do it stick to it yeah now thank you for explaining that no 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 you're good you're good yeah no i mean when do I ever disagree? Like, <laughs> we only just add and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I, I hear you in terms of the overthinking it. I think sometimes, especially when our experiences are colored by quite negative experiences yeah. from the past, it can be easy to project that onto the future and think, okay, this is what, you know, God wants for me right now. And to be fair, point blank period, God always wants you to focus on your purpose and always yeah. wants you to focus on becoming a better person, getting closer to him. I think- one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, would this be a distraction from that rather than being something that complements your journey to intimacy Mm. with God? So you haven't really noted anything from this dilemma as to whether he has a relationship with God, if he's a Christian, these kind of things are important. And I think also looking at some of your past relationships rather than seeing them as complete failures, maybe learning, but using them as learning experiences instead. So obviously what were the areas that things didn't work out in but then what were the things that you actually learned that you're looking for moving forward and being quite strict but also quite intentional about what you're looking for from a relationship moving forward because I think sometimes the lack of clarity as to what you've learned from the past season can make the next season really difficult to navigate so I think you need to do some work yourself Mm -hmm. to really understand unpick unlearn understand what happened in that last season in those last situationships and those relationships Mm. and be clear about what you're looking for so you don't feel confused when you are in situations with your friend or even just situations point blank period with the opposite sex because like Courtney said men gonna be around and I know that you said that you're believing in God for a partner yeah. and that you desire companionship. So there will always be an element of you that will have to be discerning yeah. when it comes to having relationships with men anyways. So making sure that you are clear on that and you're not simply projecting a broken heart as opposed to moving forward mm-hmm. with the clarity of the lessons learned. And then I would also say, be clear with the guy as well. Even if it is, you know, I'm currently confused or I'm currently taking mm. a back step. I think it's really important that you actually communicate to the guy since he kissed you. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all kissed or what not. Wait, they actually kissed? Yeah. Why don't I listen? Am I, am <laughs> no, I you are just comprehension <laughs> problems? What the heck? <laughs> no, it's okay, girl. All you I heard was she the... wanted to kiss him. He wanted to kiss no, her. No, girl, they kiss. They... <laughs> Give me up. <laughs> You're a clown. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, man. I can make things calm. I don't. That's the thing. I don't know if it was like a light pack or if we went to France. You know what I'm I don't know. You know what's actually a disgusting word? What? Snog. It is disgusting. Do you remember snog marry a voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that. That. Yeah. Wait, did we? <coughs> snog oh, marry a voice. Interesting show. One day we should play that. No. And people should give us a list of people that we think snog marry a void. Okay, fair. Because that show was outrageous. That would actually be good. That show was outrageous. <laughs> what do you mean these people are coming at you? Oh, I'd avoid you. <laughs> so I'd snog you, but you're not marriage material. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I'll marry you. Like, do you know how outrageous that That's is? That's crazy. Anyway, so it's coming back to your dilemma. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that it is worth having a conversation with him and acknowledging his feelings too. Mm. Because for him to feel that ready to kiss you, especially after six years of friendship, oh, this man was waiting for you at the oh. door. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and at least you have six years of friendship to reflect on and yeah. say, this was a good guy. Like it's not, it's not just any guy that will be hanging around with you for, you know, six years and you feel comfortable with them and stuff like that. So I think it would be worth having a frank and honest conversation conversation where you acknowledge his feelings but you're also quite honest and transparent about your feelings even if you're still working through them I think you at least owe him that Mm. especially the level of depth you've cultivated in your relationship and I think 
take a deep breath. Because yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes we can, when it comes to dating and relationships, we can overthink it so much and think, oh, am I missing the mark? Am I missing my destiny? Or my purpose? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is this my purpose partner? Mm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Slow your roll. Yeah. Take your time with this one. It's actually okay. Yeah. Things don't have to be figured out today, tomorrow. It might end up being a process where you guys speak multiple times to really try and understand where both of you are at and then proceed from there. So Thanks. take your time. Don't be too stressed over this. You're not in a situationship mm -hmm. in the same way as, you know, your last relationships. Take your time with it. I like that. That's good advice. Yeah. So, and in the meantime, if you're not sure how you feel, don't be stuck in him. Sports sports, okay? Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't do that, that just makes the water muddy yeah don't do, don't do that i know you want don't to though but you know <laughs> take it easy <laughs> <laughs> but sis sending lots and lots of love we love that you have what seems like a good man around yeah. you and this is you know worst things could have happened he could Facts. have been a problematic character that came to lipsy and now we're confused but seems like a good guy and it's just a question of can you continue to prioritize your relationship with god yeah. as you are continuing your relationship with this guy absolutely absolutely all will be well all will be well now mm. moving on to the creme de la creme of the conversation yeah which is all about boundaries romantic yeah. relationships gisty 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 <laughs> now i really wanted to delve into this topic because i just feel as women that also have a desire for long-term companionship and there are quite a few women in our midst as well and within this community that really do desire long-term companionship yeah. a lot of us can get super frustrated mm. annoyed mm. just lose hope and faith in the dating process and period yeah. because it feels like the guys are just getting it wrong yeah. or it feels like we're getting it wrong again and again yeah. so i actually wanted to start the conversation with asking you courtney what are some of your hard and fast boundaries oh, yeah. when it comes to navigating the dating world? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think faithfulness. Yeah. Well, okay, so when you say dating, what are you describing, actually? That's Ooh, the first question. No, not the reverse. Yeah, unicorn. because is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I drank something like <laughs> my morning iced coffee. <laughs> I mean, more so, is it just getting to know people yeah, or yeah. is it like I have found a person and now we're dating? We can talk about both, actually. Okay. So there's the initial, like, I'm just scoping the scene yeah. out. And then there is the, we are going out on multiple days okay. we are probably now exclusive but we yeah. haven't de decided to be boyfriend and girlfriend whatever that is worth oh got so. you okay so like dating yeah so i like as, as an activity cool so not as an activity don't i feel me. like for me my boundaries with dating is one um communication mm -hmm. i just like honest and transparent communication i feel like if you're trying to get to know somebody you should be able to know the real them yeah. and that's not me saying you know come and dig up all of your childhood trauma and tell me all about like everything you've been through every day of your life but more so like I should know very obvious things about you like mm. how old you are how what do you have children Sorry, have you been married before like things like that yeah. like just very honest <laughs> Just very <laughs> honest truth. And the thing is, it sounds funny, but people love to lie. That's why it's actually hilarious. Do you get what I mean? Like people actually love mm. to paint themselves as like the perfect person. And it's like you rob me or you rob whoever's dating you yep. of the opportunity of actually picking you for who you are. And I think people try to, people probably do it out of fear or mm. maybe shame or to be tactical. But it's like, let's be serious. You're just laying up a trap for your future self at the end of the day. Mm. So I feel like one honest communication is like or honesty and then actual communication around like, okay, you know, if you're going to be late, I expect you to let me know. Yeah. Or if you know, you can't do something or you want to do something, I want you to let me know. If you're seeing other people, I would like to know. Right. Like I would just like there to be just open communication, even if it feels like it brings on awkward discussions. I think that's actually really, um, a really opportune time to get to know about a person's reasoning. Yeah. And I think when you learn more about a person's reasoning, you can determine like, is this somebody I'd want to do mm -hmm. life with or a serious relationship with? Because maybe they think a bit waywardly or maybe they think just different to me, but actually mm -hmm. it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I I like communication a lot. I also think I, I hate, Renee, I hate mm -hmm. dating that is too focused on like 
physicality and sexuality straight yeah. away. Ah. Like, I don't like it when I've just started talking to a guy and already he's talking about sex. I find it really perverse. Let me... <laughs> I find it really perverse and predatory. I don't know what. It's the predatory for me. <laughs> I'm just a baby girl. Of course. Cool. So have you ever received, you know, an inappropriate photo? Yes. Unsolicited? Yes. No, don't kill me. Yes. And I find it abusive. It, assaulting. Like, that is assault. Because why am I seeing your dangly parts? We oh, ain't even, I ain't I even seen even, you more than you 24 hours. I mean? Or you're sending me a picture of you in the shower. Is this Sodom <laughs> and Gomorrah? Is this why you pay your phone bill? You filthy man. Oh, the FBI is looking at your phone. (laughs) And they see it. You're daggly bitch. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, I just hate it. Because I just feel like it feels like a violation of me. It it really feels like a violation. And I know people do it to be flirty or to be, you know, like playful. I find nothing flirty or playful about it. I'll report you to the police. You have to. That's that's so unsolicited. Ew, don't do that. (laughs) And oh my gosh, I have a lot of love for men, but the way that some of them be taking the photos for their nudes. Why have you seen nude pictures, Renee? Unsolicited <laughs> pics. I ain't asked nobody, please, please. My parents are listening to this podcast. Mom and dad, I'm sorry. We don't look at stuff like I that. I don't look we at stuff like girls. that. No, we're, we're good, good girls. girls. Unsolicited. Yeah, unsolicited. But Jeez. yeah, I just, I don't like it. And something about it makes me feel violated. Now I'm not like, like we always say, not kink shaming, not yucking your yum. Like if you, if that's how you enter into the dating phase, it's fine. I think it's just because I don't like that. Yeah. yeah. So then when somebody does it, even if it's like fine for them, it just feels like oh, we're definitely on a different, two, we're different. two different pages here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. It makes me uncomfortable <laughs> and it will end the whole situation. Yeah. Um, I don't like, wow, this is going, it's really just the list is flowing. I don't like. I don't like when men try to humble you. Oh, I don't like it. Lord. That's a big boundary for me as Lord. well, because I, I think, Okay, so one thing that happened when like online dating, which was unfortunate, was obviously like <laughs> my first name is Courtney Daniela, mm-hmm. like together. Mm-hmm. So when I put my name there, it's actually very easy for you to just search who I am. Yeah. And I Google people anyway, yeah, like 100%. whether your your face looks familiar or not, I will Google you. And so obviously when people Google me, they find a lot of stuff about what I've done um, and who I am, I guess, online anyway. And then the conversation becomes about me, my accolades, me being a black woman dating, who is a successful black woman dating or yeah. And then suddenly there's this air of like, oh, but you need a man. Oh, and it's well, like, don't try and do that to me. Every don't try and day. make me feel small or like mm-hmm. I'm in desperate need or something. Yeah. Like I'm just a person here trying to explore a conversation with a man. That's very wild behavior. So I don't like that kind of... um is it what's it called is it negging yeah negging. yeah, yeah like yeah. when men are trying to it's like a backhanded compliment. yeah like mm-hmm. kind of pit you down a little bit to put you in your place or kind of make themselves you know some kind of this kind of machismo that makes them an authority over you a bigger mm. figure over you and i'm like you're ruining a good thing for ruining yourself yeah it. and i'm leaving yeah now yeah, yeah, this yeah. chat has ended <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't like that. I don't yeah. like when men try to like exert themselves as like, well, I'm the man. I'm like, I know it might be a primal instinct, but it's gonna it's self-sabotage, Tony. It it's not gonna work. Um another boundary for me actually is around my time. Mm-hmm. I don't like giving people a lot of time. Yeah. Um, depending on the level of investment. Mm-hmm. I don't like when my time is violated. Yeah. I like you know me. Yeah. I'm a stickler for time. 100%. Like, even one or two minutes, I'm like, that could have been a- that lateness could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. So what's going on? So I just like respect. Mm-hmm. Like I really just like respect on the front of you actually don't mean know me from anywhere 100%. and I don't know you from anywhere. So let me give you some honor and you give me some honor, especially as two people who are trying to make an impression. Yeah, so those are some things I don't like. I guess more positive boundaries for mm-hmm. me is like, I well, men might consider it more positive. I don't expect a lot of like lavish things. Yeah. Like I'm not, I don't want to be love bombed. I don't need yeah, you no, to buy no, me yeah, loads yeah. of stuff. Um, I feel like for me, I'm trying to keep my mind as sober as possible so that it's not um i'm not deceived by anything Mm. or i'm not swayed by anything especially material things Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so for me it's more so like 
let's just go and have conversation yeah. and let the set let the conversation be healthy let it also be wholesome to some degree yeah. just so that i can get no, to know more about how you think yeah. and how you navigate the world and how you know you as a person your personality that's me in the dating phase now in the dating as in exclusively moving towards something more serious yeah. i like loyalty mm-hmm. like i really do and that's where for me co- like honest communication is paramount if you even have an inkling that like something is up you gotta let me know asap wrap it up yeah i don't like the feeling of someone knowing something and i don't know it because mm-hmm. it makes me feel like a fool mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i don't like that mm-hmm. so yeah i just like honesty i like honesty Aww. um yeah, I like honesty. So I think even stuff, with friendships. Like, yeah, I like awesome. honesty. How about you though? So what are some awesome. of your boundaries? I think we have quite a few similar boundaries. The first thing that popped into my head was the boundary around time. Yeah. I am also a stickler for time, but more so there's certain times in a day that I like to do things yeah. or you know, there's certain things that are really important to me within my life. Yeah. And I don't like it when people feel entitled to my yeah. time. Oh, so entitlement is a big time. What off. do you mean you're texting me, calling me constantly? And don't get me wrong. I love like consistent communication. But when you take it a bit too far, mm. it's like you got a job. <laughs> you employ, <laughs> you work. You got things to do. <laughs> or you do is, is do everything you do okay? Yeah. I've definitely been in situations where there've been guys that have Erred on the side of over communication mm. and communicating a bit too often yeah. to the point where I genuinely question, do you have purposeful things that you're doing with your time that you're looking for me every single moment? Because <laughs> you're always here, always available. Why are you always available? Yeah. And I'm not one of those, oh, you have to be Mr. Mysterious. Absolutely not. Yeah. I love me, my good morning text, yeah. how you doing, all yeah. that kind of stuff. But every hour, hey, babes. Yeah. Thinking of you. <laughs> I bought a croissant. <laughs> thinking of you. I got this coffee. Jobless. Chicken in. <laughs> I was listening to this podcast. Thoughts of you. This is it's actually Just suffocating. Just wanted to check in. You How's me? your mom? <laughs> <laughs> very suffocating it's, it's giving it just makes me think of like stalker behavior yeah. like why are you on my ass like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my ass too much yeah so that's one like very serious boundary yeah. that i have another serious boundary that i have at least in the initial phases is non-consensual intimate touch mm. don't be t- if mm-hmm. we're together don't be thinking especially in the very early stages kind of linked to what you were saying around the boundaries around don't be too sexual too quickly don't be coming here stroking my thigh yeah. it's date one you're touching my thigh don't touch me the in general. point like Unless period a handhold if it's you know mutual it's concept, mutual but- but touching me uh, <laughs> 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 whoa hold on a minute. hold on buddy because <laughs> that is what you are right now i don't even know your social security number uh, i don't know where you live you i don't know if you me. wash your hands oh i just think again it's very presumptuous uh, why you touch me so? <laughs> it's just too much. <laughs> so yeah, a big boundary that I have is around physical touch, especially because physical touch is relatively high on my list of love the way languages. love languages, right? So whenever I am touched in a way that's inappropriate, or I feel uh, it just makes me feel <laughs> very uncomfortable. So that's a very hard and fast boundary for me. Please, yeah. please don't touch me don't unsolicited. Touch me. Don't send me dick pics. Don't, don't send do that. me that just. Uh, just. Isn't unsolicited nude pictures a crime? It has to be. I actually think it is a crime. <laughs> it has to be. I don't know what you thought this was. It's too much. That's the police too... come knocking on your door. You're going to say I'm a problem. You're a criminal. You're a criminal. Actually, a bandit. And this is disgusting. Stop it. Another kind of boundary that I have is just around like. It's around communication, but progressive communication. Mm -hmm. So I think whilst I am a very honest, upfront, you know, all that kind of stuff, babe, transparent babe, entitlement to knowing everything about me straight off the bat is a bit too much. Right, right, right. You don't need to know like where I live for safety purposes on the first date. Like, especially in the initial phases, I think that's more of a progressive thing as the trust is being built. And I think sometimes when people feel as though they want to move the process along quite quickly so they feel quite entitled to who you are as a person as opposed to committing to the journey of getting to know you so it's kind of like i don't want to waste my time tell me everything about you i'm like you've got to do some work 
Yeah, I'm not telling you where I live. Stranger danger. It's not good. Simple. So that's also a boundary. And actually a physical boundary is it will take me a while to tell you where I live. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. Unless mm. I already have some kind of knowledge of who you are before we start yeah. dating. If this is, I'm assuming that I've just met this person, yeah. the first date, whatever. You don't need to know where I live. In fact, my friends probably know where I am at this particular moment. So if you try to kidnap me, then things will happen. <laughs> it's, it's not good. Don't be creepy. That's yeah. that's a really big boundary for me. And then I think moving along in terms of like dating exclusively, I think very similarly to you, I hate being surprised mm. in negative ways. Mm-hmm. So if there are significant experiences or things that you have had that are still currently impacting you to this day, I would want to know what they are. And I don't want to be surprised in conversation with somebody else. I don't want to be surprised in any kind of interaction. I want you to actually get like, so don't give over this. I don't want to, exactly. I don't want to be hoodwinked. I don't want to be bamboozled. I don't want to be taken for idiot. None (laughs) of that. That's a hard and fast boundary. And sorry to go back to the initial, but, if you are with somebody, mm-hmm. if you have broken up with somebody within the last few like weeks mm-hmm. slash months, mm-hmm. if you have had any kind of romantic relationship that is still tough, that's a hard and fast boundary for me. Mm-hmm. I cannot be dealing with you if it still feels like there's a lot that you need to overcome, yeah. especially because chances are you're going to bring that into our new relationship or bring that into this space. And I do not have the capacity or the bandwidth to deal with old stuff in this yeah. new circumstance. So yeah, Word. those are some of my boundaries. Word. Take it or leave it, men of the community. Take it or leave it. But where I actually wanted to go yeah. and talk a little bit about is the difficulty of implementing boundaries. Mm. Because one thing that I have struggled with, and I'm sure maybe you would have had a similar experience or some of the women that are listening into this conversation is when you, in theory, have written a whole list of values and boundaries and just, oh, this is how I'm going to comport myself when I'm dating. And then along comes a tall, handsome, fine, he is everything that you wanted physically, but there's some pew, pew, pew red flags popping up, popping up. Yeah. We don't realize it, but in hindsight, often we see that our boundaries start to slip a little bit because the man fine, or there's certain things, you know, <laughs> no, nah, real red. Sucks, sucks, sucks. There's some fine men out there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie to you. I can't lie to you. You know, there's some fine tall men, yeah. you know, me, I like them tall, dark, Same. handsome, you know what I'm saying? And... <laughs> It makes it difficult Mm. for you to honor and respect your own boundaries. So talk to me a little bit about that. Have you ever had difficulty with implementing your own boundaries? And if so, how have you overcome that? I personally haven't, but that could explain why I've been single for so long. (laughs) So she She said, pick your heart, (laughs) pick your heart. Um, I think the reason why a lot of people say drop their standards or lower their own boundaries or violate their own boundaries when dating to be fair I think there are so many things at the root of it but one of the biggest ones is often either enamorment what you've described like I'm enamored by this person they're really handsome and I don't want to lose them so I'm just going to choose to be blind to their red flags Um, or maybe they're really rich or maybe I thought that they are out of my league Mm. like it's very reminiscent of the Risa Tisa situation where it's like he's paying my rent I saw red flags but that rent is getting paid so I think there's that there's the enamorment but then I think there's also a fear element to Mm. it which is something a lot of women experience when dating anyway right which or around their dating Mm. so it's like oh maybe i haven't dated someone in a long time maybe this person is a good candidate in in other ways but i'm seeing some things which typically Mm. i'd be like "Mm -mm, i don't like this this is a sign of something else um but because i may be scared that time's kind of moving you know or you haven't dated someone in a while maybe your standards are way too high or you have external voices telling you like that's a dumb boundary to have, Mm. you know, this is just normal. These are the times, this is the culture. You may then start feeling like maybe I should just let them go. But I think that makes us forget that we put boundaries in place because they make us feel safe. And we know what would make us feel uncomfortable. Like, you know, a man touching you in any way Mm. is like, 
mm, don't mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. I know it makes me feel uncomfortable. But if you start to kind of almost gaslight yourself into thinking, nah, but if, uh, I guess it's okay. He doesn't mean any harm. You find yourself allowing yourself to be uncomfortable. And yeah. I think that women have to remember that like, dating isn't a performance for a man you are also worthy of being comfortable in the process Absolutely. of making sure that you are finding someone who makes you feel safe and doesn't violate those boundaries in the first place i think people naturally um have different ways and approaches to dating so a man may be like everyone i've dated you know i put my arm on their thigh and they're completely fine Mm. so he just may not be aware of your unique boundaries so i'm not saying that it's like oh it's a red flag you're never dating him again it's more so oh actually i don't like being touched um like that so don't do that yeah um for me please and he'll probably respect that and i think that's a green flag that's mm-hmm. what i mean like it's worth having the awkward conversations and mm-hmm, actually mm-hmm. letting people know what your boundaries are you know i i didn't appreciate when you said that or i would have liked for you to be on time or if or actually i think sometimes reinforcing positive things so that people know that it actually is a big deal for you and you do appreciate it like yeah. i appreciated that you came on time or you kept me in the loop as to the fact that you were running late or i appreciate that you were forthcoming with this information i really do appreciate your honesty i think it lets people know oh this is what courtney likes or this is what renee likes and so let me continue to do that you Mm. know so i think women have to really i know we've been standing we've been talking a lot about like standing on business and being in your executive presence but i think women need to be a lot more confident in being like these are my boundaries i'm gonna stick beside them yeah um and i would hope that you'd also respect them if you want to be with me but i think a lot of women have not found the confidence in their own voice to Mm. say that I feel like a lot of women haven't found that they have validated their own boundaries in that like no these are my boundaries they are actually important and so I'm going to be confident that because these boundaries matter to me they are worth respecting they Mm. are worth you know this person respecting it but also me maintaining them yeah um, because this is what makes me feel safe this is what makes me feel comfortable and so I'm also going to be confident and really stand in my reassuredness that I can assert myself and not be you know rude not be arrogant but genuinely just I want to be at peace Mm. and so I'm not going to let you disturb my peace by violating my boundaries and like literally I am the gatekeeper of that like I am the one who is in charge of whether I let this continue or not or whether I allow myself to still be in your presence despite the fact you make me uncomfortable or not like that's actually my decision and I think when you take responsibility for Mm -hmm. that as well you start to be a lot more firm in the assertion of your boundaries and the maintenance of them um and you have little tolerance for people continually violating them especially after they've been aware so I think the reason why people struggle is they haven't found that confidence Mm. and they haven't found themselves Um, they haven't found the confidence to be assertive enough. Maybe Mm. they don't have, they don't feel empowered enough to do it. Um, I know that thankfully, like we are surrounded by such amazing women who really continually empower us to know like your choice is your choice. Your standard is your standard. And they will let us know if we're bugging, which I think is a nice measured approach, but they let us know like, no, if that's what you want or if that's not what you like, that's completely fine. Even if it's contrary to their standards, they're just like, if that's you, that's you stand firm on it. So I think also being within a culture or even a subculture that reminds you that like you're within your full right to have your standards and maintain them allow you to not feel scared mm. to enforce them with a guy um and the last thing i'll say because i know i've rambled Mm-mm, on no you haven't is that i think there's also that lack of fear or scarcity like what we we're saying in the dilemma right yeah men are gonna be around yep. and i think as much as there's a subculture that tells us men are so scarce they are the prize men, you're, a good man is so hard to find we are of the school of thought that men are everywhere (laughs) (laughs) they be around men are everywhere and actually a woman is the prize and also if you are putting all this responsibility on how society goes on the woman i it's actually more important for me to pick right and then therefore stick by my boundaries (laughs) right so i think it's also having that lack of a scarcity mindset but also having a contentment Mm -hmm. that I would rather have the right person and wait for that than to be impatient and get the wrong person. Mm. You know, I want to wait for a good thing and not just a thing for right now. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I I think that's some of the reasons why as well as some of the ways to go Mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely love that. And I think just to add to that, I love what you were saying around safety. That's one of the biggest reasons that I think boundaries are so important. Boundaries keep you safe. Safe. 
And I think it says something about our society and it says something about us as people and as women when we're willing to put what is essentially our safety at risk in order to appease men, yeah. appease narratives, appease this growing desperation or fear mongering or whatever it is that is causing us to overlook boundary transgression. We are actually putting our safety at risk, whether it be our psychological safety, our physical safety, our emotional safety yeah. at risk because- when I do think about a lot of societal narratives around women, it's around giving. We are portrayed as givers. We should yeah. constantly give, but giving at the risk of your safety, mm. eventually there's going to be nothing to give. Facts. You've given up everything. <laughs> there ain't nothing to give, baby. There's nothing left. Used, 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 used up. So I love what you were saying when you were talking about safety and having the confidence to really articulate your boundaries because yeah. your boundaries are essentially a manual as to how to navigate you. Yeah. You are teaching somebody, these are the rules of the road. These are the principles. If you want to travel down this road, then these are, hello, this is the, the sign. These are the laws of if, the land. The laws of the land. And if you violate that, then unfortunately, <laughs> we are treating you as a literally terrorist. <laughs> we are treating Access you. Access is denied. Listen, and do you know what? The one people, the one profession that I really respect, ticket inspectors. Mm. One thing about it. <laughs> You have to be like a ticket inspector yeah. when it comes to enforcing your boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> because one thing about those ticket inspectors, they ain't going to let nothing slide. They don't care. They see you parked on a double yellow line. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> they see you even like the scent of a car that yeah. is parked somewhere or doing something that they're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That ticket inspector will write you up a ticket facts, real quick. Facts. I wish women applied that same logic. That's a good that analogy. That same confidence. That's a really good analogy. <laughs> facts, facts. They should. Like, because... Again, you're putting people at risk. Exactly. It's actually a hazard. It's putting yourself. You're putting yourself at, <laughs> yourself risk. at risk. Yeah, you know I mean, you're putting yourself at risk and seeing yourself as worthy of being protected. Yeah. Being protected by you, not just other people, because yeah. we often put our safety and safeguarding in the hands of other people. Mm. Your boundaries are teaching you that your safety starts with you. It's your responsibility. And actually, exactly. It starts with your responsibility. And me being safe is actually okay. And I don't have to put my safety on the line to access all of the fun and great and wonderful stuff that comes with romantic relationships. And I think you set a very dangerous precedent when you allow people to violate your boundaries Facts. early on in your relationship. Facts. Because one thing, you give the devil an inch, he gonna take a mile and keep pushing. <laughs> keep pu he Facts. Facts. Ring Facts. you for filth. Facts. Dry. Facts. You have to be so careful. So, so careful. So don't give an inch. Don't allow anybody to take a mile. Yep especially those of you that have had your boundaries violated in some way. I think sometimes people really struggle with bouncing back and seeing themselves as worthy of being protected once they've been violated, That's right? It's, I've gone through this in my life and that now becomes the perception that I have of mm -hmm. myself. And a lot of people actually don't deal with the deep feeling of unworthiness mm -hmm. and lack of protection that mm -hmm. comes from a violation. It could have happened when you were a kid. It could mm -hmm. have happened when, you know, you were in adulthood or whatever, but not allowing the transgression of your boundaries in a former experience to dictate your worthiness mm -hmm. or your capacity of being protected by yourself. I think it's super, super important. What happened to you is what happened to you, but it doesn't have to be who you are now. And yeah. it doesn't mean that you now are, now you have to surrender your rights to your body mm. or you have to surrender your rights to your emotions. So I think that sometimes the journey of overcoming starts with unpacking why, where, why we feel, the journey of overcoming starts with unpacking why. That's all right, you'll get it. <laughs> No, you will. I can, I can tell it's a philosophical it's, thought. Come on. You know when Dig it's deep. percolating? <laughs> <laughs> Dig deep, mister. Bless us with the mm. word. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know when ministers they've got to wear this set. Oh, thank you Holy this one Spirit. is coming that a download from heaven Jesus. actually Jesus <laughs> kingdom <laughs> come on instead of you to be blasted in tongues uh, uh, now they're they gonna click off I tell you they're gonna they click off this podcast off. episode we know that we have annoyed you guys cheese um something around the fact that the journey of overcoming starts with you understanding what it was that leveled you in the first place. Mm. You need to understand what it was that was the road blocker. You need to understand what it was that came like a bulldozer yeah. in your life and kept you down. Yeah. Once you understand it, that's when you're able to overcome it. Yeah. When I think of like games, for example, yeah. lots of those really 
like okay not like super violent games but when we think of something like call of duty or we think of all of these other games that mm-hmm. involve you really understanding the villain in order to overcome i think oftentimes when it comes to overcoming boundaries you have to understand what is the villain that i'm facing in order to overcome and then i'm equipped to deal with it and move past that particular yeah, level that's good and the thing is if you don't master that level then you're bound to repeat it again and again, again and again, again and it becomes a cycle it bec- it's because you haven't actually mastered that villain at that particular level so deal with your villains deal with the fact that somebody violated your boundaries when you were a kid someone violated your boundaries early on in your life mm-hmm. or in your understanding of relationships and then once you have that understanding once you've unpacked that and once you've actually shirked off the identity that you've allowed yourself to become with it then you can move forward into the next level. Mm. And I think the last thing that I'll say is Mm. a lot of us allow ourselves to enter into new relationships without healing from the old ones. And that's another reason as to why our boundaries keep on getting violated again and again and again. We are bringing literally broken shards of glass from a past season into a new season. Mm. Suddenly it becomes really difficult to heal and move on and actually enjoy the fruits of what might actually be a healthy relationship because you haven't gotten past the transgression of a past relationship. Mm. Suddenly there's a whole bunch of victim blaming, there's a whole bunch of like false projection, and then we see the deterioration of even healthy relationships because we still haven't dealt with the systemic issues from the past season. So good. So I think that a lot of us actually do need to sit with that as well before we move on and take our time i agree with you on that when it comes to dating as well listen i am all for people getting into long-term healthy happy mm. relationships i am all for marriage all that kind of I, go and be free sis <laughs> listen i get it you want to be with your man you want to <laughs> knack baby i get it you want somebody oh, to be with I'm at serious. night you know you I'm want somebody serious. to take care of you you want somebody to be going to all of these nice places <laughs> with you know some, okay you want somebody to be emotionally there for yeah. you i get it but sometimes good things take time yeah exactly and they're worth waiting for. and they're worth waiting for if you didn't listen to our last uh, podcast episode which is literally about it'll be worth the wait you should probably listen to that too but these things are worth the wait. Yeah. So it's okay. You don't have to rush this dating process. Please. Ah, take your time. Take People your are time. mad out here. And also you don't have to compromise. Absolutely. You Go do there. not have to compromise. I think women are often taught, even if it's subliminally, that yeah. you have to compromise on your dating standards. Yeah. And we're not just talking about the superficial stuff and your expectations. and uh, We're talking about the bare bones of safety right. and respect right. and somebody seeing you as a human being whose boundaries are you know worth honoring yep. you don't have to compromise on these very integral things in order to you know meet somebody else's deadline for your life or live up to someone else's expectations or give in to other people's fears and rushing you um it's okay like mm-hmm. these things are not worth compromising and i think you would ultimately be upset with your your past self at some point mm. that you allowed yourself to make that choice mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. you didn't stick by what you knew was right for you and you allowed other people or maybe society or these subliminal me- messages to bully you into accepting something that was actually beneath you yeah. um so don't do it don't do it it's beneath you. It is beneath you. It smells. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to talk a little bit about creating those boundaries. Yes. Because sometimes it can be difficult to know what exactly is a healthy boundary, right? There are boundaries that we think are, you know, normal. Surely everybody adheres to these kind of boundaries. Yeah. And you enter into the dating world and realize, wow. Some people are ruffians. (laughs) Some people have completely different, well, no, genuinely Genuinely. speaking. There are some people that are, okay, maybe not ruffians, but they are (laughs) allowing themselves to be made manifest as a ruffian in this current season of their life. They're a ruffian. Wow. And then sometimes the problem is not necessarily other people with their wayward boundaries or their different worldviews, but sometimes the problem is actually us Mm. in our expectations sometimes our boundaries i you know i've had a whole bunch of conversations with women and sisters that may have what feels like almost unrealistic expectations or unrealistic boundaries when it comes to the dating space so 
What are your thoughts on this? How do mm. women create what feels like healthy boundaries that mm. respects them and keeps them safe, mm. but at the same time doesn't put a disproportionate amount of responsibility on potential suitors, yeah. other people to try and knock down the fortress or yeah. knock down the castle that's been built yeah. to get to them? I think the first thing is boundaries are unique to you. I think if your boundaries or... <clears throat> I think if your dating boundaries or your dating expectations mm -hmm. have mostly been shaped by social media yep. or yep. culture yep. or people around you, you really have to take a step back and look at this, you know, long list of stuff that you expect or you, you want to maintain and think, is this actually reflective of me? Mm. Is this actually reflective of what makes me feel safe? What makes me feel happy? Or is this as a result of other people has, have told me this is what respect look like looks like or this is what love looks like right. or this is what pursuit looks like um so for example you were talking about that physical touch thing if for example i had heard that from you i was like oh my gosh yeah because somebody shouldn't touch me on the first day i am a precious jewel mm -hmm. why should anyone use their filthy hands to touch me <laughs> but Long actually fingernails. do you know what i mean but actually <laughs> a man putting his leg on hand on my leg doesn't make me uncomfortable. Mm. Like it actually, it doesn't make me feel any type of way. It doesn't make you right or me wrong yep. or vice versa. Yep. It actually is just a unique thing about you, your character, your disposition. And so I think allowing, this is why it's important for women to just know themselves. Right. Like what, what do you like? What don't you like? And don't adopt somebody else's boundaries or somebody else's desires or somebody else's expectations mm -hmm. because they make it seem superior. Yeah. Yep. that's yep. not true it doesn't make you more feminine because you don't do this or you do that on the first date like it's just you and your personal philosophies your yep. personal um the the way that you've decided to live your life and so I think being a woman who is firstly acquainted with your own principles, mm -hmm. acquainted with your own personality will allow you to have authentic boundaries yep. Yep. are these boundaries authentic to you I would then say too you have you have to test it out i think the way that i've learned a lot about my boundaries is by people actually violating them mm -hmm. and i'm not saying put yourself in dangerous positions mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. sis you have to go on the dates to understand what are your boundaries and what aren't right? right what do you expect from men and what don't you because i find that a lot of women because maybe they don't date as much a lot of this is just in their head like mm -hmm. it's pure theorizing mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is fine because obviously if you don't have the experience all you can do is theorize yep. but once you date a bit more and you actually put yourself out there you get to test out does this actually really matter to me yeah. or actually maybe you start to realize there are things that you never even thought of that actually irk you to the core that you're seeing people do continuously um and then I think the third thing for me is also now that you've observed these things through actually doing the dating take a step back and think what is a closed hand issue or an open hand issue mm -hmm. what are the issues that like this is a non-negotiable and what are the issues where I don't like it, but to be honest, it's actually not worth fighting not for. That deep, yeah. Like, for example, I don't like listening to people chew. I <laughs> really hate it. It could kill me. I could actually die. But as I've matured, I've started to realize it's not actually that deep. It's not worth fighting on. It's just not worth I mean, fighting if you chew on. Open it, mouth. No, that is that feral. Is <laughs> <laughs> we gotta talk about that. That is a wildlife. That's that is wildlife are behavior. You toss at it. <laughs> <laughs> God, Food etiquette there are animals that eat these things like that. Don't be dumb. <laughs> uh -uh. Not chop, chop, chop. Yeah. chop. <laughs> That's a boundary. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be very honest you with you that's just a lack of self-respect how are you yeah, eating some like that some people went the way that they were brought up you never know that we are incompatible <laughs> we are incompatible clearly our upbringing is incompatible mm. but like i used to really nitpick on like like any sound mm. that i hear from i'm like i don't like that <laughs> But as I've gotten older, I'm like, this is not a hill worth dying yeah. on. Do you know what I mean? And actually it just raises up more issues than it brings about change. Yeah. So for me, it's just like, I've now assessed, okay, as much as this was a boundary, it's actually an open hand issue. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then there are some things like I illustrated at the beginning that are closed. I don't, 
that is never gonna <laughs> sit do well with yeah, me. No, I don't, I don't do, do that. that. You know, so I think you have to know what am I fighting for? What are the hills I'm willing to die on? Or what are the things that are my non-negotiables? I yeah. will let you go for the maintenance of this kind of peace. Or what am I? Nah, I can deal with it. Mm. So I really think it comes down to the self-awareness piece. Yeah. Um, and allowing yourself to like I said, stand 10 toes down on Come what on. it is that you do end up coming up with, you yeah. know? How you feel is how you feel. What makes you feel safe is what makes you feel safe. It could be based on, you know, your past experiences. It could be based on the things that you have seen happen to other women. Mm. Whatever it is, if you feel like this is it, these are my close hand issues, stick by them. And I think feeling empowered and feeling confident, like yeah. by either the culture you're in or what you expose yourself to will help you to maintain those things. Right. To help you to know that actually, you know, I'm a smart woman, yeah. I'm a wise woman and yeah. I know myself. So after assessing these things and after becoming this woman, I've realized these are my non-negotiables. Mm. These are my boundaries. And I know why I've put them in place. I've put them in place to keep me safe. Yeah. I've put them in place to keep me happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I'll happily articulate them to you. I'll happily explain them to you. I'll happily have discourse after you maybe even violate them to let you know, oh, by the way, you stepped over a line. Don't do that. There's a line here. I don't mm -hmm. think you saw it. You can step <laughs> back. Yeah, because it's fine. You know, these lines are invisible, but there is a line here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you crossed it. Just go back. It's okay. I'm going to issue you a ticket. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's all right. I don't it's need to punish you. Points. You know, I don't need to punish you. I just, it's a warning. <laughs> it's a boundary yeah. there. And then... You know, I also have the confidence to say, oh, you're back over this line. Why do you keep doing that? Why are you so close? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you keep doing this. What's going on? Back Let's sit again, down and I talk see. about that. But I think it's a woman who is confident in her own voice. Yeah. Confident in true. her own choices. Who can even have that conversation that yeah. says, you know, one, two, three strikes, sir. You're out of here. Thank you. Hello. So I think you have to also have that in order to create and maintain your own mm. boundaries as well but no, what do you that. think no i pretty much agree i think understanding the purpose of your boundaries is key and understanding Facts. who you are as a person Facts. because you can't just lift boundaries off of social media or from culture or society however the only place that you can lift boundaries from is the bible yeah um and maybe this podcast but the reason why i was going to say that is so insidious actually mm. is because a lot of times people come on the internet to say they'll never allow this they'd never allow that but actually, that's a lie. In fact, because you allowed it, that's why you're here to it's talk about it. It's actually quite hypocritical. You're here um, to talk about and it. And then you'll be so, so sad when, you know, you have listened to absolutely everybody's dating advice. Oh, I would never accept this from her. I'd never accept that. That's and then boundary. you're single and you're happy, but then they are not. And they're accepting the nonsense that they said they would never accept. Ah, I thought we were all in this together. <laughs> Support the sisters. Thank you. Stop that rubbish. Yeah, don't be deceived. Yeah, no, people can come on this internet to lie. And when people are sharing boundaries that worked in their life, yeah. it doesn't mean that it will work for really? you. Yeah, you yeah, live yeah. in a completely different life and in a completely different context. This is about you taking responsibility for your own happiness, your mm. own welfare, your own relationships. These people that are giving you advice on the internet, they're not going to be there. They're actually not going to be, even us, we're not always going to be there. I apologize to tell you. We're not all, you can stream us from morning till night. <laughs> <laughs> And we'd advise that you do that. Yeah. Get our downloads up. Yeah. Actually, sister, share this with a group chat, please. So just send someone a cheeky WhatsApp. Have just a conversation like, hey. about what are your boundaries. Facts. And also cross-reference with people in your real life as well. Because yeah. oftentimes the people that are closest around to you give you more of an insight as to what is realistic or what makes sense. Having said that, if you are currently with scallywags yeah. and ruffians <laughs> and you know it, no, genuinely. Literally you're rolling with bad people. Because there's some friends. <laughs> <laughs> you're loose <laughs> anything goes yeah those people maybe don't be sending it to them yeah. sure. okay just be guided be guided have wisdom but oftentimes having friends ha having accountability having people to cross reference yeah. with is important rather than allowing your accountability to be echo chambers on the internet dangerous game talking about dating in silos talking about men as if they are these dehumanized vessels that just have to you know bow down to whatever we decide yeah. is appropriate for the day because yeah. tomorrow you'll be listening to another podcast that will tell you that this is wrong and yeah. this is right and, and then briefing is the issue. hello the day after and vice versa as well yeah. because i know that there are some 
very interesting podcasts that are being spearheaded by men Mm -hmm. about some of the boundaries that they have for women as Mm. well that I think are egregious at best. Mm, mm, Um, mm. Don't allow your life and your boundaries to be dictated by random strangers online. They're strangers. They don't know you. It's a parasocial relationship. And don't allow just the prevailing culture to dictate to you how to keep yourself safe. That culture is not going to be there when you are actually put in an instance, put in a real life interaction with a human being and things are going tits up. They're not going to be there. Honestly, listen to our episode on, I think it's called Social Media Has Ruined Our Dating Expectations or Mm. something. Um, And even as you were saying that, I just, I feel like it's my quarterly reminder that the kingpins of the um, red pill community are either dead or f- felons. <laughs> so Woo. model yourself after people you would like to become. Now, if your aspiration is to die prematurely and to go to jail on a federal case, fine, you're walking in the right footsteps. I, aren't think, you? Uh, oh, oh. I think you found your path. You can tell them by their fruits. A tale as old as time. And this is why we often say the Bible. The Bible. Watch the fruits. Don't Mm. watch what they say. Watch the Mm. fruits. What are they producing? What have you seen? Even those that are talking about navigating the dating scene. Have they been in healthy, happy, thriving relationships? (sighs) Can they be? (laughs) (laughs) There have been many an expose. Because one thing, because the men love to come up in these comments, well, you guys are single, you ain't married, but we're not in jail. Uh, And as you can see, we are alive. uh, And well, and thriving with many a fruit in our garden. Glory be. So please be guided, follow, create your boundaries and make sure that you are actually at the center of them. And please, please, please stay away from these echo chambers. They can only be maybe 10% of what you add. Yeah. Go and ask people in real life. Speak to people that you know, have the fruit of what you desire. Again, another reminder, if it is that you desire marriage or long-term relationships, get around people that have that. Because oftentimes, don't get me wrong, our single sisters, we love you girls. But there is wisdom that can be gleaned from people that are a bit, not even further ahead, but people that are in a season that you also aspire to be in, right? In the same way that if you're looking for an epic career or you're trying to pivot, you get the wisdom from someone that's already there or somebody that's navigated it well. That's another call. Some of you sisters that are married, I said healthy, please. (laughs) Or some of you that are in long-term relationships, I said healthy and happy, because sometimes we think by virtue of having the thing or having, you know, a husband or a partner, we're happy and thriving and healthy. No, the possession of the thing is not indicative of its health. Mm. So, mm. um, I guess to just briefly land, the plane, <laughs> mm, land just to briefly <laughs> land the plane. Uh-huh. <laughs> how do women go on that process of creating their boundaries? Like, what mm. what are some of the key activities or some of the key things that women should be doing when it comes to creating their boundaries, and how can they? implement them slash maintain them in the heat of dating yeah i think one just think about what makes you feel comfortable i think this is why friendships are also important because i think they also teach us about our boundaries as people like i know my friends love to banter but (laughs) there is a certain line you do not cross (laughs) oh sorry there's a certain but there is a certain line we do not cross like you won't you won't catch us cussing each other out and you ha 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 it's not a joke no we'll end up not being friends. Well, that's when we'll end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? We'll end up not being friends. That's not a joke. So I think learning that from my friendships has also allowed me to be like, I don't think I would like that from a relationship either. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think one, like, just learn like what makes me comfortable, what makes me uncomfortable from people. What is that stemming from? Is this something I need to change? Or I'm actually mm-hmm. happy with myself being like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so then what does this look like in dating? Yeah. You know? And so... I think that's the a good train of thought to kind of follow. Um, I'd also say like, like you said, run them by people, you know, or ask people like, 
especially if you've never dated before and you just don't know what that terrain yeah. is like like ask people what some of you guys are dating like how do you date what are your expectations what are your boundaries tell me some of your dating tales um and then you'll just hear stuff and you'll think mm, yeah i never want that to not be interested me. or you know yeah that makes sense or you can have that but that's not really me so yeah i think it all stems from like i said self-awareness mm. um in terms i don't think this is anything you definitely you necessarily need to write down but if you find yourself coming from a past of very unhealthy relationships and I do think there's a deeper work that needs to be done of somewhat cultivating your own manifesto that you use to remind yourself because I do think and I know this is going to sound really deep but past experiences especially past traumas have a way of disempowering you Mm. especially with your own critical or pessimistic thoughts Mm. and so when those things do arise oh no you you don't deserve a good relationship you don't deserve safety you don't deserve for somebody to you know honor your boundaries especially if they they've been disrespected in some of the most grievous ways in the past you have to have something maybe there that's written down or easy to see that allows you to counteract those kind of thoughts like you know I know this is quite graphic, but if you are somebody who's been sexually abused a lot in the past or even once before in the past, I think that that dark voice in our mind can tell us like, you don't deserve to be physically protected um, or or no one's going to ever honor your physical boundaries. um, And that's a lie. So I think you may have to have something more penned down or even a conversation with some kind of a therapist or some kind of counsel to really reinforce in your heart that know your boundaries, your physical, mental, sexual boundaries are worth honoring um, by men, women, whatever. And so- yeah, I would say it, it kind of comes down to sitting down and really thinking. I think you need to take time away, mm. all of us, to just think like, hmm, I want to date. What does that look like what for me? What does that look like for me? Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely love that. Very, very much love that. I think really having a conception of what does your most empowered version of you look like, Mm. like really just describing her. I love that you mentioned like writing it down for you guys that are painters out there. You might want to paint, (laughs) you might want to draw, you know, but actually having a concept of the kind of woman you really want to be because when we leave things to interpretation or we leave things to how we feel on a particular day, then we won't ever get that consistency, which is indicative of character. Mm. So be clear on the kind of woman that you want to be. Describe her. What are her traits? What What is the way that she behaves? What is the way that people interact with her? And that will inform the boundaries that you need to implement Facts. on a daily basis. Facts. Not even just with friends, but actually in a romantic setting too. I love that you mentioned, you know, learning from friendships as well, because... I feel like friendships are safe spaces where you can experiment a little bit, right? And you're experimenting with people that know you. So you have the benefit of a little bit of familiarity to be able to bounce off of people, to understand what they've been through, for them to understand what you've been through and to be able to kind of vibe with you and let you know whether this boundary makes sense or not, or whether this boundary is reasonable in the context of dating. Mm. So definitely lean on trusted friends, people that have produced fruit, people that actually have your best interest at heart. Because sometimes we may be interacting with people that don't necessarily have our best interest at heart. It doesn't mean they don't love you. It just means they don't have your best interest at heart. The two are completely different. I can have love for you, but not care for you. Mm. Make sure that the people that you have around you, that you are vibing with, that are informing your boundaries are people that actually care for your best interest and want to see the best version of you. I think is super, super important. And then actually going on the dates. You don't have to line up a stack of dates. Some of us were dating every single night. Ooh. Every single Jeez. night. It's a lot. <laughs> and if you're... <laughs> What are you seeing a different man? Listen, let me not yuck your yum because, yo, if you you get different cuisine every night, uh, one day is Chinese, tomorrow we're going to India, <laughs> Caribbean the next night. And then you wonder why you have a tummy ache. Fam. Hmm. No, but can you imagine every single day, oh, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Well, if that's you, then I love it for you. Me, I don't have the capacity. You need to start handing out cards. You, uh, this, this is my initial this is diagnostic. My, do you know what's funny? I saw somebody on um, Instagram actually that had like a diagnostic yeah. form questionnaire before she dates people you don't have to do all of that yeah. but you should mentally at least have some kind of checklist yeah. or some kind of idea <laughs> as to what are your green and red lights what are some things that you find comfortable what you you, you know find uncomfortable. uncomfortable and then the last thing that I will say is the same thing that I said at the beginning of this episode which is to take your time yeah 
Take your time. There is no, nobody is going to fight you. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to beef you. Even those people that are telling you that you're running out of time, even when you run out of time, Sha, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be there. Too many people that have too much to say with such little investment in our lives. Yeah. If they don't have any stocks or shares in your life, then this what they have to say is not important in the grand scheme. It's just irrelevant. irrelevant. Don't give them power or authority to dictate how and what boundaries you implement in your life. Don't allow fear. Don't allow this false sense of rushing to enter into yeah. your life. Take your time with it because boundaries, they're so important. They're literally the manual as to how we navigate the world and how we want the world to navigate us. Mm -hmm. So take your time. You're worth protecting. You are worth safeguarding. You are worth it all. Facts, facts. I was going to say one thing on that um, dating point as well. After every date as well, assess. Like Mm. what went well? What didn't I really like? Um, Not nitpick, but just assess. Um, And I think that will also help you to just be, especially as you meet more unique people. Oh, that's the word unique. (laughs) It's like, oh, actually, never thought I'd encounter that. Uh Never want to encounter that again. Or actually, I've realized there's something that I like that this person has done that I've never experienced before, never heard of before. There we go. go. Let's go. Bob's your uncle and all that jazz. (laughs) Well, sisters, uh, unfortunately, we have a boundary that we need to (laughs) adhere to and honor, which is the end of this episode. Let us know in the comments below over here on YouTube, but also on Spotify, what boundaries in dating do you have? Had you have? Those of you that are further along, give us some gems. What you got for us? Yeah, man. What you experienced? Those of you that are still in the process, give us some gems, but also give us some tales. I want to see in the comments. I remember four school many (laughs) years ago when I was a teen, (laughs) when I was in my twenties. We want to hear all of those stories and Mm -hmm. more. So drop it like it's hot in the comments below. And of course, Follow us on all of our social media platforms so that you never miss a hit from TMS. At To My Sisterhood, literally everywhere, everything, every platform you can find us is at To My Sisterhood. Join it. And of course, come and follow us individually. You can follow my lovely, wise, encouraging, and recently turned 27 bestie at CD Boateng. And of course, come and follow me over at Renee Kapuku. We love to see it. And of course, you got to make sure you sign up to our mailing list. Like we described in housekeeping announcements, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming to the sisterhood. <clears throat> International sisters, keep your oh. eyes. Guys, I... I am even giving you so much prior knowledge, oh, like so yeah, much yeah, prior. Yeah, yeah. This is so in whoa, advance, whoa. right? Yeah, yeah. Please Bro, get yourself signed up to the mailing list. Please. I don't want don't to hear them. him when the second half of this year comes and you're hearing about certain drops, certain opportunities, certain events, certain locations. I don't want to hear, is there any more? To, I haven't got the link. Uh, gee, where's the I link? I've got nothing for you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So go to twomysisters.com. It's even do it now. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, (laughs) go to to tomysisters.com. Open your phone, your laptop, any device connected to the internet. Tomysisters.com. If you want the spelling, it's the name of this podcast. Come on now. And then you type in your email address Hmm. and you hit join. Boom. You are part of the mailing list, sisters. Okay? Don't be embarrassing. Join the mailing list. Not only do you get a weekly love note straight to your inbox, where we divulge such wisdom, tips, philosophical thoughts, okay, to you that will encourage you for the week. We also give you exclusive access to things we have been planning for months. Be for real. Experiences experiences oh community please gathering don't do that to yourself Shy. yes so yeah sign up to the mailing list don't miss out don't miss out. oh also sorry 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 uh i know i'm always saying rate the podcast five stars oh, but actually come back yeah. can you yeah rate the podcast five stars since you're here anyway but can you rate our book if you've read our book please head to amazon and rate it um let the people know what you thought about it drop a review let's you know get it charting and all of that good stuff thank you five star five star five star yeah if you have anything below that amazon no no amazon is actually ruthless yeah let's not even let's not even police them yeah rate it and them <laughs> things there buy it for a but friend if it support, is less support. than three or two stars please i beg of you don't public shame is not what our portion don't do that we tried our best it's our first book we really did <laughs> okay. maybe the next book will be better sorry sorry <laughs> sorry sorry besties sorry ah please pen us pen us pen us <laughs> 
Anyway, sisters, we love you. We love you. We love you. Have a fantastic start to this month. And as always, keep glowing and and growing. growing.